All right, you fucking bastards. Got to do that because YouTube has gone to hell. So I don't want to be monetized anymore. And if I swear in the first seven seconds, then the, no ads will show on. So I turn monetization off on all of my other videos. Oh, wow, this is really zoomed in up close. Uh, and I'm going to start swearing in the first seven seconds for now to see how that affects the monetization. Because even with me turning monetization off, you still get uh, ads, which I think is ridiculous. So today we are looking at the Radixa Rock 3A. I don't have the box for it here, but there's random screw. But this is the little SBC. It's been out for some time. This is version 1.31. I quite like it. It's stupid cheap. Um, I think they're like 20 bucks or so. This one doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi. It's got an M2 slot and it has got two gig of RAM on board. Uh, it's very similar to, oh yeah, and I've also stuck a uh, EMMC on there. Um, it is very, very similar to the Radix 3, uh, 03W, which I did a review of recently, except that's a th uh, rock chip 3566. This is a 3568. So instead of being 1.6 gigahertz, it's 1.2 gigahertz. There are a few other little differences as well. So we're gonna have a look at what makes this different, how the image is broken, how it goes with Wi-Fi, because that was obviously a big issue, how we can overcome the issues with the factory image and heads up, I've made my own image you can download and use. And then if you can do 4K, I've got a 4K display just over here. I'm gonna plug that in to see how it goes. So I might have to swap lens when we get to that. So without further ado, let's uh, send an intro that I haven't made yet and get into it. Cheers. Now, on top of this also having the uh, slightly faster process, it's got one Terra operation NPU and it also supports Bfloat 16. So if you're running any basic uh, machine vision models, it does really well at that. And it you would imagine it's kind of designed for that given that it supports EMMC, so you've got some faster storage on the back, but it's got MIPI DSI and MIPI CSI, only two lanes, so you'd be pushing um, you know, pretty hard bit rates to do 4K, but it does also do 4K out HDMI, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let me just see if I can fix up some of that focus there and get us a better view of this. It also supports quick charge and power delivery for the USB-C power. It's got the 40 header pins on board as opposed to having to solder them on. Uh, it has an M2 slot, as I mentioned, so I'm gonna use that to stick a Wi-Fi module into it. It supports, because it's got the pins there, the PoE hat, uh, which you can get from Waveshare. I don't think I've got any in stock. It's got additional USB ports, as you can see there, slightly out of focus. And uh, it, it's a slightly bigger form factor. This is your standard credit card size form factor. Um, oh yeah, it's got uh, M2 on the back keyed for SSD. And so I think that's, uh, what is that? E keyed and that's A keyed or whichever way they go around. But it's quite a powerful little device. It does need a fan on it. So I've got these fans in stock and you just stick it straight to the top. And then what I usually do is tie it straight to ground and you can either go for the 3.3 volt or the five volt. It depends on what you wanna do, but it can get a little bit loud and I'll show you that shortly. So first of all, I flashed this with the factory image and the factory image is a bit slow to boot and has some failing. So I'm gonna plug in a little Luxfox HD display and we'll have a look at that, it won't be a sec. All right, that nifty 50 is a good lens, but this gives us a little bit more focal range. Now, um, this is a seven inch touch HD, and what I've done, I've got a little flat ribbon cable here, which is HDMI coming back here, and I've then hijacked the power out that this has, and given it to the five volts there, leaving the fan on 3.3 volts, and I've got the USB dongle plugged in. All right, so now if I plug this in, you see you've got the little green light that's come on there. And then it does hang for a moment here with um, the default loader, which bothered me, but I think I found a workaround for it. And then we're gonna see the blue light start flashing next to it. There we go. That is gonna be a bit bright. I'll see if I can tone this down in editing. And it does otherwise boot reasonably okay. Uh, that blue light's just running a heartbeat script now. And the default logging is Radixa and Radixa. Now, this does work quite well. Um, I haven't found many huge issues with it, but there are one or two things that really put a spanner in the works as far as I'm concerned. Now, just to quickly touch on a few things um, that are missing from when you actually do go to flash it. The instructions aren't very clear, but you do need, essentially what's, 
I, I guess the worst thing in computing since Windows ME, and I call it a danger noodle. It's a USB 2.0 Type A to Type A cable. Now I just made this myself. You can kind of uh, see there how I've just literally. I mean that's really bad. I did it this way just so I could show you, but it's literally a pin to pin from a Type A to a Type A. This is a really bad way to do it. I wouldn't encourage you to do it. I'd encourage you to buy one if you have to. They shouldn't have used this. They should have used an actual OTG port. Uh, but yeah, if you do have to flash it, it is the top uh, USB 3 port on the side. The documentation, the new documentation doesn't state that. Uh, now, if you do find somewhere that sells the Danger Noodle, then I would go there, buy just that, and then never go there again, because no shop should ever sell those. They can do a lot of damage if used in the wrong way. Um, now, when you do need to flash it as well, these two pins here need to be shorted, not the inside one, the two outside ones. You can leave them shorted though. Um, I usually jam a screw in there, because they need to stay shorted, but after you flash it, you can leave them shorted. You also need to short these two pins just in here. They're actually the mask ROM pin. So I just use tweezers, unplug the power, tweezers on there, make sure that's short, plug the power back in and then let that go. And it's in mask ROM mode and you can flash it. Uh, it is it is pretty easy, but the documentation is not very clear about that port or about the pins. Uh, but that always works a trick. Now you can see here, moving the mouse around, it pretty much does work as expected, but you can see that's it's got some lag going on. Like that's pretty horrid. Um, so that's instantly going to make it quite difficult to use and not having networking is going to be a little bit challenging So I'm just going to shut it down. I've got uh, a couple of different Wi-Fi modules. I've got in stock and on hand so I'm going to be using the I think this is an AX210. I've got one or two of them left so you can literally just slot that in the E keying there and with a little screwdriver if I can try to not knock anything there we go and now if we boot this back up it do, does have a little power button on the side wait for the loader to kick in again i might need to power cycle it the the button says it's a power button i don't know if it actually works yeah it does all right so that's booting back up and uh this is running a 5.1 kernel out of the box so um this Wi-Fi module should work. I've had no issues with it. I don't know if there are any bugs. The 3W had some issues with both WPA3 and with 5 gigahertz networks, gigahertz networks out the box. That was the onboard Wi-Fi module though. This is an external module and the drivers included seem to work perfectly fine. So now that that's booted up, if we go in, you see I've got my test networks here. I'll just jump. Actually, no, you know, I'll make a point I'll prove my point and I'll join a five gigahertz WPA3 network. This doesn't have transition mode enabled. It is a straight WPA3 network that I'm not typing into. There we go. So that joins, I've got good signal, but we're gonna be hit by the issue. Um, I mean, obviously with these graphics drivers, these are the pan frost drivers. And if we can, my clock is behind that it is I'd expect it is that is definitely not the date um, if we run GLX gears what performance are we getting out of that there 94 FPS so that gives us a good starting point but I've used this before and you can see even just using the menu you're gonna want to smash your head with a brick so I'm going to flash this with the image that I've made. Uh, the image is Ambien instead of their Radixer image. I've also used Debian uh, SID, so it's got a 6.1 kernel. Um, I don't have the touch connected. So I'm going to shut it down, flash it with that, then we're going to boot it back up and compare it. Hold please. So if you're using RK DevTool 2.9 something to flash this instead of 2.6, then it's going to be missing the write by address checkbox and the storage name. So for the loader, um, you want to call it loader, but have nothing of a storage. You do want to specify EMMC, and I'll put a screenshot on the screen for you. Oh, you can see here, I probably already put the screenshot for you. Um, uh, and you want to specify the EMMC for that and call that image. And then you want to tick right by address. I don't understand fully how this work, works, but that's how you flash it in this version. 
and I have found that mine errors at 99% but still works fine. So I'm not sure if that's a checksum issue or something like that, but it's always been right for me. All right, so I've now just flashed it with my Ambien build, uh, which is Ambien 24.5 using the 6.1 kernel with Debian SID. Um, now I was gonna flash it with the, uh, the SPL loader 1.12.109, because I found it doesn't hang at the start so much, but my danger noodle being home baked, like you saw, is just not great. Uh, the signal's actually pretty bad, so it doesn't always flash properly. Uh, that could have been why it got to 99%, but it does work as I mentioned. Now, uh, this image I'll put a link to below. I've got it on my GitHub page and do I, oh yeah, it helps if I plug in this USB dongle. Um, it doesn't have any of the Radixa firmware and customizations in it, but it uh, it's just straight up Ambien, which I found works pretty well. So let's go through this Ambien first time setup. And let that do its thing. You can see it booted quite quickly as well. Uh, uh, connect by wireless, yes, I forgot it has that feature built in. So we will also go grab the 5WPA3. Again, just to prove the point that uh, this AX210 module works a treat. We are gonna set our location, and uh, then we'll see how good the graphics are. And I know they're good. I've been using this thing on and off for about a year now. I actually quite like it, especially for its price. I'm not gonna benchmark it now, but I'll probably benchmark it later on and just leave it running overnight. I always get the two gig memory versions because then I can run Geekbench 5 and 6. Uh, and you know how I feel about swap, but I always leave a gig of swap enabled, but I set vm.swappiness equals 10. So it's really gonna try to avoid using swap if it can all get away with it. Now this is also, uh, these RK3566 and 3568s are quad-core A55s. Uh, so that's an ARM version 8.2A architecture, which means, in theory, this could run Windows on ARM. Uh, I'd expect it to actually work. The issue with this specific uh, board is that there's no SPI flash. So ideally, you want the loader, uh, then you put uh, UEFI, to, to some degree, probably compiled specifically for it, in the SPI flash and then you boot to USB and install from the USB or the ISO installer. So there we can see Ambien, I'm not sure how washed out that's gonna be for you, but if we go and have a look, if I grab the right mouse up at the menu, that's that's excellent. So, uh, terminal. I'm gonna plug this fan in too, because it does uh, slow itself down a little bit. GLX gears. That also even started quicker. So my understanding is that the other ones had, oh, uh, it's bloody locked to the frame rate, I think. Um, yeah, that's got V-Sync enabled for some reason. I know it's better though, because I've done GL mark on both of them. And you can see just from the menu that it's so much more responsive. Uh, the other ones had an old version of the driver, which I document in my GitHub repo. This one has a uh, much newer, I think uh, Mesa 23, Panfrost drivers, and uh, Radix to say that the other one doesn't have the Panfrost drivers because of some incompatibility or something. I don't really know. And we'll be able to see this working, and then I'm going to slap on a 4K screen and we'll really see it working. Did I? No, I can't type for shit. Tinkers. Uh, I'm also looking at this on a weird angle. Um, I'm not sure if I'll leave this in stereo, but that's why my voice is coming from the right-hand side. Little fans make a little bit of noise, but not too bad. And that's about where you'd expect. Chrome is kind of hammering it. That's what Chrome does. You might want to install Chromium instead. It is actually a little bit lighter, but I've found that, you know, for the most part, this thing works quite well. Uh, you just get much better graphics from the get-go with this version of it. Oh, that's a bit weird. That angle was a bit off, wasn't it?
and that's it. Besides buffering, working as it should. Now these uh, these screens, I've got one or two left in stock as well, and they're pretty bloody handy. Um, so what I'll do, I'll pause it there, and I'm just gonna unplug this. And actually, I'm gonna completely power the whole thing down, because I'm gonna unplug this screen as well to plug that other one in. You can see this screen here actually has the mounts on the back. So this thing I usually have mounted on there, and that's how I'm gonna keep running it. But for now, I'm gonna unplug it. And I'm gonna plug in this 4K screen, and we'll see that it actually does 4K 60 as described. Alrighty, this should do it. This is my cheap AliExpress 4K HDR screen, which believe it or not, actually does what I needed to do. It's pretty portable. It's got sound built in, it's got USB-C, it's got HDMI, so. Jeez, that's looking good. I'm not sure how good that's gonna show through on the camera, but for, can I just get a bit more of you in there? From where I'm sitting, that's excellent. Good timing too. I've only got about seven minutes of storage left on this SD card. Jesus, I should change the DPI though, or the scaling, because that menu is going to be impossible to see. Look at that. I've actually got to look up close with my head. But it's obviously doing 4K. I can't, let's actually, let's piss that off for a moment. That looks like terminal. GLX gears. It is running synchronized. Yeah, all right. I don't know why it wasn't running synchronized before, if that's um, something that I can turn off. I honestly um, cannot recall half the commands needed for this. Yeah, that's not doing anything interesting at all. Let's fishbowl it at 4K. It's doing something. I'm not sure what's going on here, to be honest. It can do 4K60, we saw that GLX gears. Maybe the graphics drive included with this one for the 3 a just isn't as good as the uh, 03W. The 03W slapped pretty hard here, but I didn't do it at 4K because it's only got 1080p output. The only thing you are going to be losing though is, uh, because this is Ambien, without any of the Radix stuff, you're not going to have the overlay to enable the NPU or offer any of the additional camera support or anything like that. So you're probably going to have to modify it yourself. Software needs a little bit of work. That's normal for Radixer. For me, it's just going to run on this little 7-inch screen, and it's going to be showing my front of house, probably my front and my back camera. I might even put all four cameras on there. But that's the uh, that's that's this product for you. If you liked it, I hope you, hope you did. Um, I didn't really put much effort in because I'm kind of sick of YouTube. Um, ask any questions in the comments. I argue about any of the stupid shit that I've done, swearing and whatnot, or drinking beers. I don't particularly care. If you want any of these, you can get them from a race. If you want any of like the Luck Fox screens, the EMMC modules, the cables, the uh, Wi-Fi modules, they're all in my shop and I'll put a link below. So I hope everyone's doing all right. Hope you learned something from it. I'm going to mount these, put them back where they were. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next time. Had I just quickly Googled it earlier when I was recording the video, I'd find that you can set V blank underscore mode equals zero as an environment variable before la launching GLX gears. Now we can see uh, the old image was doing 90 something FPS. This image with the proper drivers is doing 400, nearly touching on 500 FPS. So clearly an improvement there. And I've just been keeping an eye on the temperature while I'm doing that. It was sitting around 55 without the fan. Now with the fan, it's sitting, you know, low 50s. So everything is looking very happy there. I'm going to install VLC, configure the window layout, and happy days. Ooh, 800, 600, Jesus.